What's up divas and what's up divos? It's your girl April and you already know what time it is. Real Talk Wednesday. So yes, I have like I'm hoping to have like four videos for you girls today. I am not drinking anything but some water. I'm feeling really like not too well. My allergies are like killing me. So it's giving me like this really bad cold vibe. Like, you know, like you have a cold and you just get really sick in the beginning. That is how I get when I have my allergies, especially if I don't, if I'm not bothered with them for a while and they're not bothering me. And then when I do get them and they come on, they come on so strong. So yes, please excuse my vibe if I feel or I seem a little low key. But other than that, um, the hair that I'm wearing is say is still the same hair, which is from NubianBar.com. And if you, if I'm looking this way, I'm trying to make sure that the camera is focused and the lens is clear. Okay, so yes, it's the same kinky straight hair from Nubian Bar, which I absolutely love. I will be doing an update video on it this coming week. So be in store for that. And I will be putting some curls to this kinky straight hair. She has done me justice. Like, seriously, I love this hair to death. Especially, I think it has a lot to do with the color. So, this is my favorite wig. Okay. Yes. And I tried something different this time. Like, some orangish lips. I had to put, like, a topish color gloss over them. Because it was kind of bright. And you girls know, I don't be wearing those bright colors. I do not. I just don't feel comfortable in some of the bright colors. But other than that... That's about it. For those who have been asking me on a few of my videos, where do I get my earrings from? Um, a lot of them I will, I've had from my actual previous website, Smooch's Accessories, that I had. So I have like a huge stock in my garage full of jewelry still. So I will go in and pull out something of my own. But, um, yeah. And these, these big earrings that are like... Ugh, a bracelet size. These are actually from this store called Wave. I think it is. It was in Desert Sky Mall or Dysart Sky Mall, whatever. I don't even know. But they were 99 cents. I got them for 99 cents along with these right here for 99 cents. So I've been rocking them. I don't really do the earrings that are so big like this because my neck ain't but so long. So they be kind of like, okay, April. Yes. And other than that, um, really not much to say. I haven't really been doing anything. I gave my daughter, who turned 14, a birthday party um, this past Sunday. Her birthday was Saturday, so I gave her this huge party at main event out here in Avondale, Arizona, which was cool. If you guys have a main event, look it up. I did do a video on blog of it or vlog of it, whatever. So I'm thinking I might just put that up. And, um, yeah, nothing really spectacular. Got my carpets cleaned yesterday. Um, and that's about it. So, yes. Um, so, yeah. So, if you have a Real Talk situation that you need to be discussed, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please make sure to put in the subject line, Real Talk. So that way I know it is a real talk video. And if you want to change the name of some of your characters, meaning yourself or the people that you know, please make sure to try to mention that in the first um, beginning of the email so that I don't have to make names up, okay? But other than that, let's get into this real talk video and I hope you girls enjoy it. So like I said, I'm going to try to do four today. You know, I will ramble on and just keep talking. So here goes. This one is a little lengthy, but it is what it is. Hi, April. First and foremost, thank you for taking the time to read this. I love your channel. I've been a fan many years now. Just want to warn you in advance, this is going to be quite lengthy. For the sake of this video, you can call me Chanel. I'm 23 years old and I'm a college student and a tractor trailer driver. I have been dating a much older guy since November of 2015. He is 47 years old. I actually met him at work, girl. Mistake number damn one. I've never been into dating anyone where I work, but around that time I was lonely and wanted some company. Now before me and him, my last relationship was with my high school sweetheart. Me and him were together for five long years and we've been broken up for a year now. And I felt that it was time for me to get back out and start dating again. 
So anyone that gave me attention, I would talk to them just to have someone to talk to. I didn't want anything too serious, just some company. But when I tell you that it was men only 40 years and up talking to me, I'm not lying. Guys my age have not really been too interested in me because I'm more mature and I have been told that I have an old soul. So I entertained the idea of having an older guy. I went on a couple dates with a 50 year old as well as the 47 year old with whom I'm currently dating. I ultimately chose the 47 year old because the 50 year old was a fucking pervert. So you can call my boyfriend Rich. You can call my boyfriend Rich. He's 47, as I stated before, and he has four grown children and four grandchildren. As I said before, we met at work, and he was totally an asshole to me in the beginning. He never said anything vulgar to me, but he was just being a dick with his actions and attitude. I was new on the job, and I was trying to get my composure until one day I got back, until one day I got back with his black ass and let him know what it is. I'm going to take the sound off my phone so you don't hear that chiming. So one day I'm sitting, ever since then, okay, so where I was like, one day I got back to his ass and let him know what it is. Ever since then he was cool since I had to help him find his place when he was talking to me. So one day I'm sitting on my truck and I'm on my break and he pulls up and is talking to me and he asks me for my number. I was kind of sketchy because I'm like, I don't know what this nigga wants, so I didn't give it to him. I played it off and changed the subject. But as time went on, I eventually gave him my number and we spoke over text messages. And one night he said, you're such a beautiful person and you have a beautiful smile. If you will let me, I would like to take you out and we can have conversation. I told him okay, but I wouldn't go out with him until I was ready. And because I was still going on dates with other guys, because at the time I was single and I could do what I wanted. So once I finally had some free time, I took him up on his offer. And we made plans for the weekend to go out and eat and to the movies. He was such a gentleman and seemed interested in knowing me. So we went on a couple more dates, and I'm still thinking that we were just going out on dates, not actually dating. And that's what he took it as <clears throat> Excuse me, and that's what he took it as. But I wasn't ready for a relationship. So he kind of got into his feelings because I wasn't ready for a relationship. Because I know how much time and effort goes into one. So fast forward, some time has gone by and we were driving around. We were having ca casual conversations and the topic of us being in a relationship comes up. And he says he was kind of skeptical about being in a re serious relationship with me due to our 24 year age difference. Now I'm feeling, I'm now I'm really feeling rich at this time and I felt ready to make it official. But he had his doubts because he didn't know how others would accept us. But I didn't care and once he realized that, we went ahead and did the damn thing and we've been together ever since. He wines and dines, he wines and dines me, buys me expensive things that I would have never bought myself. He compliments me always and I love those things about him. He's a really good man. But there are some things I don't like. He has made comments about how I'm the second Negro woman that he's dated. He plays around and says, oh, you people do this and you people do that. And I'll look at him and ask, who are you people? He'll say, you niggas. Now, mind you, he's black himself, but he's the type of black guy that don't date black women as much as he would rather another race. Just the ignorant ass comments that he makes can piss me off. A couple examples are, we went to the opera house here in downtown Chicago to go and see Romeo and Juliet. I bought these tickets for us because he said that he has always wanted to go there. So I surprised him and got some tickets. The whole time we're inside of there, he's on his phone, he's twitching, moving around, saying the seats are uncomfortable. So he gets up and goes and sits on the damn staircase. And I'm like, really? I bought these tickets for us to enjoy this and you can't act right? He calls me over to the staircase and asks me to sit with him. And I said, no. Why sit on the staircase and we have seats? He says out loud, so loud, well, all of those honkies are sitting on the stairs too, so it doesn't matter. Then he points and says, look at all them honkies. When I tell you I was so embarrassed, I wanted to beat his ass with my heels. So he got up and got me a drink. I told him I wanted something sweet, so he tried to get me a sweet cocktail of some sort. I'm waiting for him to come back with my drink. I see him pour water in it. He says he did that because he knows that I'm not a heavy drinker. So now I'm pissed the fuck off. As soon as intermission time came around, I said to him, let's go. 
The last straw was him pouring shit in my drink. We argued outside of the place, and he's the type that feels like he's right about everything. He's a fucking know-it-all. I didn't speak to him the whole ride home. I didn't even call him until the next day. So I talked to one of my friends, and she said I overreacted. And I took her advice and apologized to him. Fast forward a month or two down the line. I'm just not feeling as I once did for him. Even though he does any and everything for me, I'm just not happy with him anymore. I text him and told him that I feel a wedge in between us and we should try to mend things. And he claims we'll work on things, but nothing has changed. We went out and got a hotel room to spend the day with each other. And I felt annoyed the whole time I was there. I even tried laying on him to shake that feeling of disgust, but I just couldn't. So we went out to eat. And when we came back to the hotel, as we were walking up, there is a group of young black people. And he's playing around saying, look at all those niggas. And yells out, hey niggas, do you know, do you niggas know y'all niggas? We thought that, he thought that was funny. But I was pissed. And ever since then, I haven't went on another date with him. I told him I don't feel the same in this relationship, but we're still together. Because I just have never broke up with anybody before. And I don't know what to do. We barely talk on the phone anymore. And I don't see him at work anymore. Because I transferred to another station. So my question is, should I try to mend things between us or just let things go? I can't seem to choose. I just like having someone to talk to. But, uh, but I guess it's pointless since we rarely talk now. Please help, April. Thank you so much for reading this. Chanel. OMG. So Chanel is, how old is she? She's 23 and she's dating this 47-year-old bigot, okay? And that's what I'm going to call him. Okay, it's one thing to date somebody that's older than you, but you got to remember that if there is a huge gap in age difference, sometimes these men try to get with these young girls to mold and shape them and make them do as they want them to do and make them into who they want them to be. That's the unfortunate issue. Now, yeah, it's cool to get wine and dine and buy you things that you can't even afford to buy yourself or you wouldn't even afford to buy yourself. But there is a line of, there's a thin line between some shit. Now, for one, it's understandable that everybody gets lonely. Who don't want to have some type of companionship? But I like I told y'all girls before, you ladies, you females, you gentlemen, you men, you boys. I've told y'all before, before you get into a relationship, if you've gotten out of one, it is always best to find yourself. Cleanse your motherfucking soul and stop searching for love and search for yourself. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with going on dates, but you never know who you're going on a date with. And like she said, she just be, she'll talk to anybody as long as they give her attention. That that's not cool because you know what, Chanel? One day you're going to talk to the wrong motherfucker and he going to be some crazy ass Negro or whoever and you're going to find your ass on one of these TV shows. Trust and believe that's all I do is sit here all day. Well, not all day, but I watch this one channel, Investigation Discovery Channel. That's all I watch except for The Walking Dead and some other shows. But that is my main channel. And I see all types of crazy shit happening. That's all real. Everything that's on that channel is real shit. Okay, that has happened to people. So you better pick and choose wisely. Like I tell my, my kids, you better pick and choose your friends real wise because you don't need somebody coming around to you and you don't know what they got beef going on or they got some drama in their life or they are a little bit motherfucking cuckoo in the head. So I'm not going to say go out on a whole bunch of dates and don't fucking um, and talk to everybody because talking to everybody that gives you attention is not the type of people you want. Now, yes, we get lonely. However, you have just got out of a five-year relationship even though it's been a year you have been lonely and you're trying to occupy your time there is so much other shit out there to occupy your time for one i'm gonna give you kudos for being a tractor trailer driver at 23 girl please okay i can just drive my tahoe try to get me to drive a school bus one of those little short buses and a bitch will be on the curb roadside somewhere fucking um with a flat or the truck be tilted over but you driving a tractor trailer now yeah older men is cool but like I said, they are very set in their ways, okay? Very set in their ways. And they like to get with these young girls because they like to mold and shape them, all right? And a 50-year-old is a pervert, pervert, so is a motherfucking 20-year-old. Those be the perverts, too. 
I'm just saying. Now you going out on dates with him and he is a black man just like you a black female. And did this Negro come out his motherfucking mouth talking about you the second Negro I've ever dated? That right there should have fucking um, put up the red flag to your ass. Because I wish a motherfucker would say some shit like that to me. Um, well, I'm going to be the first Negro woman to smack the shit out of you and then I'm going to leave this date. That would have been my first thing to say. Because for one, that's an insult. We are a family. Even if we ain't blood, we are or unity as black people it's a shame that some black people just can't support one another and continue on with themselves instead they want to bash people so it seems like your man is more or less he's not even he's an uncle tom okay and you girls know what an uncle tom is it's some black negroes that think that they whites okay and I'm not saying ain't nothing wrong with thinking you white. If that's what you want to think, then go ahead. But don't pull your bullshit and try to sabotage other people's self-confidence about who they are. So you tell you. So he tells you you the first, you the second Negro I've ever ever dated. Hmm. Either he got um, confidence issues, or black women see him as he is, and they ain't putting up with that bullshit. I'm not saying that white women or Asian women do. However, it seems like a lot of black men like to go outside of their race, which is nothing wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? But some of them do it for totally different reasons. You know, my dad, for one, my mother was the only black woman he's had a child with and the only black woman he's dated. And the only, well, not dated, but married. Other than that, he has been married to a white woman, a Native American woman, and now he's married to my stepmother, Norma, who is Philippine. My dad don't mess with black women. He said that they're too aggressive. And that's just his opinion, okay? However, he don't go around saying, you the second Negro I've dated. I wish a motherfucker would say, you the second Negro? Like, that is like a huge red flag and a huge insult, okay? Now, like I said, some black men only want to date outside of their race because some of them just feel like black women are too aggressive. We get into our feelings, we be into our emotions, and we just too fucking aggressive, like I already said. White women can get aggressive too and be on some shit too. Asian women can get aggressive and be on some shit too. Puerto Rican, Hispanic women can be aggressive and get on some shit too. So it really don't have nothing to do with your race. However, this is just what some black men think. I'm not saying that all of them do, but some of them go and date outside their race because of certain situations and certain reasons, okay? And it can be because, for one, they feel as though they are more, they can be in more of control in a relationship with another woman that is not black. You know, but let me tell you something. There are some black women in this fucking world that are so submissive and will do whatever they black ass husbands say. I'm not saying disrespect your man, but I'm not about to let you badger me and treat me like shit. And I'm not about to kiss your ass because we are in a marriage. It don't work like that. It's 50-50. If you don't give me the respect that I deserve, then Negro, please, all right? I'm not saying I'm going to go outside of my race. It doesn't matter to me what color you are as long as you're respectable. However, you ain't about to throw the race card at me. So now you out. You taking him out to the opera house. You going to see Romeo and Juliet. And he's talking about the honkies are sitting on the staircase. Look at them honkies sitting on the staircase. What the fuck is wrong with this motherfucker? That right there is an embarrassment. What if these honkies would have got the fuck up and beat his negro ass? His nigga ass. We're going to just say it like that. Because those are racial slurs. Now, mind you, if somebody would have said, if a white person would have said, well, look, you see the niggas sitting on the steps, he would have took offense to that. You know what I'm saying? And what would he have done? He would have took offense to that. Because if I was white and you would have called me a honky and I would have heard you, I would have felt some type of way. I'm black. And I feel some type of way when people say to me, well, what are you? What race is it? What, what race are you? What the fuck does it matter what race the fuck I am? I'm a human being. This should not be an issue with Negro, honky, Chinese, whatever. We shouldn't have these discussions. But you 47 years old, you a grown ass man, and you talking about these honkies are sitting on the steps. Girl, bitch, please, I would have left his fucking ass sitting right on that step because there ain't no way you about to fucking embarrass me in public by talking about somebody's fucking race. That's ignorant, and not only is it ignorant, it's embarrassment, and it's just real disrespectful to any race. Now, y'all still out, y'all still together, 
and y'all at some hotel chilling and you feel disgusted being around him because you don't want to be around him let me tell you something girlfriend when you get to that level where you with somebody and you can't shake the thought of just being disgusted with them and you don't want them to touch you or you cringe and you just don't want to be in their presence there's really nothing you can do but leave and move on there's no way of shaking that feeling. Trust and believe I have been there in my past relationship, my marriage. And in the beginning, it was roses. And then it started just getting really bad. And at the end, I was just in disgust. Please don't touch me. Please don't come in my house. Please don't breathe, okay? Why did you come home? Oh my God, you're still breathing? That's how I would feel. And I would cringe to the touch. Like, does he really have to fucking touch me? Like, I really don't want to. There is no way of shaking that feeling because you've already got in your mindset that you don't want to be with him. And because of the things that he has done and said, you're disgusted and your values and morals are not as of his. That's the reason why you can't shake those feelings. So why bother trying to mend anything with him? You've moved on mentally, but heartfully, you really haven't because you just want someone to talk to. And that's understandable. But sweetheart, like I said, you got to cleanse your soul first. Did that Negro, when y'all was at the hotel, see a bunch of black, young black people and say, hey, y'all niggas, y'all know y'all are niggas? What type of shit is that to say? That is like so fucking embarrassing. And I guess he felt because he's black that it was cool to say. That shit is not cool. That's disrespect. What if they young little asses would have whipped the shit out of him? You know young people these days, regardless of the race that they are, they don't give a fuck about you. They don't give a fuck about how you feeling. They will kick your fucking ass in a heartbeat and think nothing of it. Because that is the society today. These young people just don't give a fuck. It don't matter if they black, white, Chinese, Hispanic, whatever. They don't give a fuck. And for you to come out and say some shit like, y'all know y'all niggas. I think if it were me, I wouldn't even give a shit if that Negro was black or not. But just don't come out your face like that. There's no reason to mend anything with this motherfucker on some serious shit. You're not speaking to him, and that's a good thing. You want somebody to talk to? Well, then talk to Jesus, okay? Because until you can get yourself right, Chanel, you ain't gonna find nothing but a bunch of perverts, scumbags, bigots, and assholes, okay? Because this is what you've gotten yourself into. So let's, let's think about this. You need to hire your standards of men, okay? He's 47 years old, and you 23. That is a huge 24 difference, age difference. And me personally, I really wouldn't want to go out with anybody that old, but there's no limit on age. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you fall in love with somebody, you fall in love with somebody. It's not because of their age. However, when you got somebody that that's that old, 47 years old, and they acting like a true asshole, then he got problems. To me, it sounds like he don't even know who he is. Meaning, the things that come out of his mouth about black people, y'all people do this and y'all people do that. Have you actually t asked him, have you looked in the mirror lately? Because you are one of these people. So it seems like he's lost in his own world where he thinks that he himself is of a non-black race. Or maybe he feels like he's better than the black race so he doesn't define himself as being black. But it seems like to me like he's lost in his own world where he feels like he ain't black and he ain't part of the struggle and he ain't part of the black community, okay? It's just, it's just how I'm feeling and this is what I'm taking. So with people like that, you need to just leave them alone. He's 47 years old. He should know better. Somebody in their 20s should know better for saying things like he said. There's no way that I will go to a group of young black people and say, y'all niggas, y'all know y'all niggas. Like, who says that? I ain't trying to get fucked up. Please. I ain't trying to get fucked up. And being that I'm light-skinned, they might not even think I'm black, so I ain't even trying to get fucked up. Not, not to mention if I was with somebody and they said some shit like that. You ain't about to get me fucked up, and you ain't about to embarrass me. Better yet, you stay here, I'm going to be a ghost. I'm out, all right? You ain't about to embarrass me. He got issues. He got racial issues within himself. He think that he is non-black. So, with him, I would just definitely leave him the fuck alone on some serious shit. Let him be. He old. He's setting his ways. He needs somebody that's non-black. Like he said, but he didn't say. Because he said you were the second Negro he's ever dated. He needs somebody that's non-black. Regardless of what they fucking race is, 
he needs that because then maybe he could feel like he's in more of control and he can feel like his jokes and his smart comments are funny you know however here's the thing let's say this he starts dating a white woman and he says some shit like that like look at them niggas look at them niggas and what if the white bitch turn around and be like yeah look at them niggas bet you he wouldn't like that shit I bet you he wouldn't like that shit. So he need to choose his words wisely. Go sit his old ass down in a motherfucking corner somewhere and get it together. Because slavery times is been over, okay? And being a bigot is been over, okay? And being disrespectful to people just ain't fucking cool. So what you need to do, you ain't never broke up with nobody before? Bitch, please, it ain't that motherfucking hard. Let that nigga know and you can text him these exact words. What's up? Listen. It ain't working out. I'm not interested in you. I don't like your attitude and I don't like your ways. Thanks for everything, but please do not contact me no more, nigga. And call him a nigga at the end. Peace out. And put the deuce aside. He ain't gonna like that shit. Because, you know, he probably feel like, oh, that's a black thing. Oh, this black bitch. Whatever. Be all of that. But I would not communicate with him no more. And I would just end it. You want somebody to talk to? Listen. Like I said... Your standards got to be a little bit better than men like this. 50 years old, 47 years old, you got a 50-year-old pervert, you got a 47-year-old bigot, assholes. They all come, men come in different shapes and sizes, regardless of their age, right? Just like females. Females like my age, they could, you can have a woman that's about, like my age, I'm about to be 42. You can have a 42-year-old woman, regardless of her race, and you will know that the bitch is 42, 47, whatever. But do she act mature? She act like the kids down the street, like it's a party every day at fucking spring break, all right? So women come in all shapes and sizes, and their morals and their values and their maturity level is fucked too, just like men. So don't think that it's just a man thing, because there are women like that as well. You know what I'm saying? But with this asshole, girl, please, don't try to mend things and make them better. Your comfort level with him has been going out the door when you was disgusted by his racial comments. And there's no way of coming back from that. And as much as you want someone to talk to and be around and have time and company with and tea time and shopping time and buy you shit, he's not your cup of tea. And... Your mind and your body know better than your heart sometimes. So go with your motherfucking mind, your brain. Because sometimes, like I said, you just can't shake that shit. If a person disgusts you and you are with them in a relationship and they start disgusting you and you start feeling like, damn, I don't want them touching me. I don't want to be around them. That is sure signs that you are not interested and that they are not doing it for you. And you're just done. And you're numb. We all, not we all, but enough of us have been through that. And enough of us have felt that in a relationship. And it's unfortunate because you be with somebody and you want to build a relationship with them and you want to love them. But then they do some old fuckery shit a few times and that shit is a turn off. You know what I'm saying? Like with me. A turn off, if a motherfucker don't have no job, it's a turn off. Okay? I don't give a damn how good your dick game may be. If you don't have a job, then it's a turn off. All right, I don't find that shit attractive at all. You know, there are a lot of things that turn women off and they just can't shake it off. And his was his freaking racial comments. So, my friend, Chanel, let that nigga be and move on. But before you move on to the next motherfucker, enjoy yourself. Make you some friends, some female friends and talk to them bitches. Stop worrying about a nigga. Or a man or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Because like I said, you being vulnerable and wanting somebody to talk to and just allowing anybody to talk to you because you got some tension, you're going to open up the doors to the wrong motherfucker and then you ain't going to be able to get rid of his ass. Okay? I'm telling you, watch who you keep company with because you'll get the wrong motherfucker and then you will totally regret it. So let Chanel you know, know what your thoughts is on this. All right, you girls, so the next one here, she titled it, Real Talk, Too Old for Dumb Shit. I would hope so. And you know what? I don't even think that there should be an age limit on dumb shit because some females be, like, in their 20s and will tolerate dumb shit from motherfuckers, okay? Men will be the same and tolerate dumb shit. There should not be an age limit for dumb shit, okay? But I can totally understand where you're coming from because I be saying the same damn thing. I'm too old for this dumb shit, all right? I don't have time for it. Yes, 
too old for this dumb shit. Mm-hmm. Hey, dear April, I have enjoyed your channel since your first video years ago when Mumsy was a baby. April, I am old in some dumb. I am old into some dumb shit. Call me Katie and my husband Campbell. Both in our 60s. Campbell was on crack and living. Yes, I said Campbell was on crack and living at home when I met him 20 years ago. I know, stupid me. He was disappearing and standing me up all the time. His mother and sister both took took up for him in everything he did and treated me disrespectful. Campbell and his mother and sister called each other all day, every day, 24 hours a day. It did not matter if we were eating, having sex, on a vacation, or what. If he didn't call her, she would call the neighbors or anyone else to track his ass down. This woman is crazy. When she was in the hospital, she wanted him to change her bedpan instead of a nurse. She got sick and Campbell had to learn how to put a catheter in her to help her pee. This I thought was not cool, but they seemed to think it was okay. These are just small details. His father, Campbell's father, was abusive, and he has had those same problems. His father died before we started dating. Fast forward 20 years. Sister and mother died. Campbell's sister and mother died. He is distraught and went back on crack. Taking money, has no claim to, not my money, and spending it like crazy. We have fought. I have been hurt. He has called the police on me. I would go on and on. I just don't have the time. Everyone that knows Campbell thinks he is such a wonderful person. Some people know he really is. I know I'm too old to be stupid, but here I am. We are married and have property that I have put money up to buy. He says if we divorce, he will take half of everything. He has a bad heart, and I keep thinking I should just wait it out. He'll be gone soon. I can't live like this. Eventually, I will get sick. He is acting like a crazy person, calling me bitches and whores and saying horrible things. I say the same horrible things back to him. Give me your thoughts, April, how to go about this. Uh, so Katie and her husband Campbell is 60 years old. And first of all, 20 years prior to that, she met her husband when he was a crackhead. Living with his mama, they got together. Now, first things first, I'm sorry. Everybody be having issues. Everybody might have issues. Drug problem, alcohol problem, whatever. But if you know these motherfuckers got issues, especially if they fucking crackheads, why would you even want to deal with them? Now, let's get back to the last um, situation, the story before this. When you lonely, and now I'm just going to go back to this one. When you lonely don't mean that you take in stray motherfucking dogs or homeless people or motherfucking crackheads, okay? I'm sorry, but if you got a drug problem, I'm not fucking with you. If you smoke weed too much, I'm not fucking with you. Yes, a bitch like to smoke weed too. Don't get it twisted. However... There's a time and a place for every fucking thing. And I'm not about to sit up here all day smoking my motherfucking brains out and being high. That's just not going to happen. Okay? However, why would the fuck would you want to get involved with a crackhead? Okay? So, here's the thing. I'm not sure if he ever got himself cleaned up. But eventually, I, I kind of think he did because his mother and sister died and... He got distraught and went back to smoking crap. So he cleansed, he cleansed himself up some. He cleansed his motherfucking soul somewhat. Somewhat. Okay? But here's the thing. So your mama got sick and he was the one putting the catheter in her. I'm not going to downplay that because that's your mother and you got to help her out because she has been there for you. But if you can find a nurse and a nurse is willing to do it, then by all means, let the nurse do it. Because for one, you're an ex-crackhead and I don't really want a crackhead putting anything in me, okay? Two, she's an older woman and you're a male and I don't really want you touching me down there. And for three, you are an ex-motherfucking crackhead, okay? So... Yeah, family is tight. They calling his, um, Campbell, her husband, is calling his mother every day. The mother is calling him every day, 24 hours a day. That shit can get to be fucking annoying. Especially if you're trying to enjoy yourself. But my thing is this. Bitch, why the fuck is you 60 years old with a goddamn crackhead? So his mother has died and his sister has died. And he was heartbroken about that shit. And... To clear his conscience and make himself feel better, he got out that pipe and started 
smoking it up again. Let me tell you something. If you were a crackhead and you got yourself clean, kudos to you if you were a crackhead watching this. Were. Not if you are now. If you were a crackhead and you got yourself clean, then I'm going to give you this, okay? However, I hope and pray for your fucking senses and self that you stay clean. Now, if you were a crackhead and we were together when you got to be a crackhead and then you got yourself clean and then you went back to being a motherfucking crackhead, um, a nigga, goodbye. You ain't about to steal and sell my shit. Now, she's saying he be taking money that ain't even his, but not her money. So whose money is it? I, honestly, it don't even matter who the fuck money is it. He's spending it on crack. He's a crackhead. There's no coming back. He's already got clean and then went back to being a fucking crackhead. And now you got this crackhead motherfucker. You got Pookie. His name shouldn't be Campbell. It's Pookie. You got Pookie up in your house. Living with you, stealing and selling your shit, because I'm pretty sure he's taking your money and you just not saying nothing about it. What makes you fucking excluded from Pookie taking anything from you? But on top of that, you got Pookie disrespecting you in your house, calling you all types of whores and bitches. That little motherfucking crackhead would have his fucking head split open. But don't take my word on that. Don't take my advice on splitting his head open. Because for one, Pookie ain't worth it. For two, he's a motherfucking crackhead. It probably wouldn't even matter to him. Because he would just go out and get high and be revived again, okay? For three, now y'all got property together. Y'all done bought some shit together. And Pookie done told you if y'all get divorced, he gonna take half of shit. Bitch, please. I wish a mother would. A motherfucker would say some shit like that to me. Especially if you a goddamn crackhead. Let him think and say whatever the fuck he feels he wants. But here's my thing, sweetheart. Get your divorce and stop worrying about property. Some people want to stay in a relationship because they got shit invested in it. Like a couch set, a motherfucking car, some bank accounts, whatever. A house or whatever. I'm going to tell you what. All that shit is materialistic shit. You cannot take it with you when you fucking dead and gone. You cannot take none of that shit with you. So why worry about it now? I have had so much shit taken from me from being in my past relationship. My money, okay? This nigga owe me like 25 G's. My fucking two trucks my crashed and my car crashed, okay? Total the fuck out. And I could go on and on and on. But you know what? I'm not going to stick around because we got some shit together. Which we didn't, but you know what I'm saying? But here's my thing. You cannot take none of that shit with you when you dead and gone. So why fucking sit there harboring over some materialistic shit? Yeah, you might have worked hard for all of that shit. You know, you put your time and effort into getting that shit. And that's your shit. But sometimes for your own sanity and mind, you got to walk away from the situation. And just fucking keep your composure and get the shit back. Get yourself together before you worry about a motherfucking couch set or a car or a house. But, here's the thing, Pookie, Pookie throwing threats and shit, he throwing threats and also throwing name calling, okay? I wish a motherfucking crackhead would fucking come out their face to me. You must be crazy, I will read you so fast, you probably will stop smoking crack, okay? But if you're about to threaten me and take half my shit, you know what, go ahead and think that shit. Because when we go to court, I'ma let the judge, your honor, Pookie is a crackhead. Pookie is a crackhead. He smokes crack. He sells stuff. Pookie's a crackhead. He's got a drug problem. What he needs is rehab, not half of my shit. That's what Pookie needs. He needs rehab. You really think that somebody is going to give him half of your shit and he's a drug addict? He don't deserve nothing. He don't even deserve to be in your presence. What would I do in a situation? I'll tell you what. I'm not about to put him in drug rehab. That I won't do because you've already been there and done that. You 60 years old. You are way too old for the dumb shit, okay? Way too fucking old for the dumb shit, okay? However, I would walk away. You talking about he got a bad heart and you gonna just wait it out? Well, you know what? You can do that too. You can wait it out till Pookie pass off and die from smoking crack. He probably gonna die any day now. You know what I mean? However, you just don't know. Sometimes crack could be like a fucking energy reviver to some people. You know what I mean? That shit might just make him like Hercules and shit. 
I don't know. But I tell you what, I'm not going to spend the rest of my days numbered with a crackhead. Once a crackhead, always a crackhead is what they say. And if I've offended those who are watching this that used to be crackheads, then I do apologize. But that's just a saying, okay? Once a drug addict, always a drug addict. Once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. And it's sad to say because some of these people, a lot of these people that have these issues always prove the same correct. Like, yeah, I was a crackhead and now I'm a crackhead again. Or, yeah, I was an alcoholic and now I'm an alcoholic again. My uncle, my mother's brother, he has been a drug addict all his life. And when I say all his life, he had probably went many years without using a drug and drinking. He's been a, a drug addict and an alcoholic. So he's got the best of both worlds. However, he's went into many rehabs, probably like about 10, 20 of them shit. And then he would come out and be clean for a minute and then go right back into his whole shit of drinking and drugging. You know what I'm saying? And he's like, my mom is 60. I'm so My mother's 62. And I'm about to, yeah, because I'm about to be 42. My mother's 62, so her brother is probably like 69. And he don't really have no real meaning in life anymore. He has never seen his kids. He hasn't seen his children since they were nine. And my, I'm 42. My cousin is like 38, all right, 38 years old. He has not seen his children since they were like nine and six, the two of them. He's always begging my mother for money. You know what I'm saying? He's got odd jobs, or he's always trying to scheme and scam, and he's always trying to say that he's going to change. But his mind ain't right because it's so fucked up in the head from using drugs. So he's a crackhead. Once a crackhead, always a crackhead. He uses drugs constantly, and then he'll stop. He goes on like these binges. And the same thing with alcohol. I remember he used to come around to the house and see my mom, and I never could understand why she would allow him to come visit. And as I got older, I was able to voice my opinion and voice myself about him. So me and him, my Uncle Randy, we don't get along. He don't like me. And he don't like me for the simple fact is I let him know what type of person he is. And I let my mother know, don't give him no money. Don't loan him anything. Don't let him sleep on your couch. What's wrong with you? You know? And I would say these things right there in front of him because you're not about to use my mother any other time you don't speak to her you only want to come around when it's convenient to you when you need somewhere to stay because you done got kicked out of the shelter or you done got kicked out of rehab or you done got kicked out of your apartment because you can't afford it because you want to smoke crack and drink so those type of people i kind of like try to stay away from because once a crackhead always a crackhead but my dear you married to a crackhead you married the motherfucking crackhead when you knew he was a crackhead once he once once you found out he was a crackhead, don't you think you should have ran for the border? Like if I find out you're a drug addict, that's like a total turn off. Who wants to be with a fucking crackhead? I would be so afraid like he gonna take my fucking wigs and makeup and shit and sell the shit. Like I come home, I ain't got not a one wig but one synthetic wig left. I ain't got no makeup or nothing. This crackhead motherfucker that stole and sold all my shit, my video camera, my computer, my lighting. I would be so afraid to be around some fucking crackhead pookie motherfucker. But what should you do about pookie situation? I mean, shit, if you want to stay it out and wait it out for the nigga to peel off and die, then that's on you. But why even bother? Because his ass might just outlive you. And I say this because you sitting there miserable and it's driving you the fuck crazy. It might fucking kill your heart off. Why the fuck would you want to be involved with some motherfucking crackhead, okay? On some real shit and wait for them to die. That's not a nice thing to say. Well, I'm going to just wait it out and wait for him to die. Like, nah, bitch. Don't wait for the nigga to die. Just leave him the fuck alone. Go ahead and get your divorce. Because you're 60 years old. Life is really short, you know. Life is real fucking short. And why let somebody make your shit miserable? I tell you girls this all the time. I'm not about to let nobody make me miserable. If we cannot see eye to eye and I'm not comfortable being with you and I'm just not digging you, good fucking bye. Good riddance. And especially if you are a drug addict. I'm not going to be bothered with that shit. Or an alcoholic. I'd rather be by myself in my own little world of feng shui and peace and harmony than to be dealing with somebody because I don't, I don't want to be alone or because I got some fucking shit invested in it like a car or a couch set or whatever. You know what I mean? I ain't got time for that. The same shit you got, you can eventually get it over again. And if the shit is all in your name and not in Pookie's name, why the fuck is you worried about it? On some real shit, he's a crackhead. Leave his crackheaded ass alone and his crackheaded ways alone. He calling you bitches and whores. 
So what the fuck is he, you crackhead? I think if you call me a crackhead, I would be more insulted if you, because if you call me a bitch and a whore, like, yeah, okay, whatever, but you a crackhead. That's like the worst thing ever. You know, like when we were kids, kids would be joking, oh, that's why your mother's a crackhead. Somebody said that to me in high school. All right, this boy, I chased his ass around the room with a box cutter razor. I didn't cut him, but I did get kicked out of the school and I had to go to an alternative high school for the whole entire year. I was never allowed back in that school. But he called my mama a crackhead, and my mama ain't no damn crackhead. My mother never even smoked cigarettes, let alone drank. So it's an insult to call somebody a crackhead. You know what I mean? So next time he call you a bitch and or be like, and you're a crackhead, right? How you gonna call somebody a name with your fucking crackheaded ass? Get the fuck out of here, you fucking pipe smoking crackhead on some real shit, okay? So yeah, my dear. It's time for you to move on, okay, and stop worrying about materialistic shit. Because like I said, when you dead and gone, you're not going to be able to take that shit with you. And if you sick and tired of the bullshit and you know you involved in some dumb shit, then be wise. You 60. You should be smarter than that. And 20 years ago, you were 40. And you should have been smarter than that back then and not fuck with a crackhead. Shit, you ain't never seen New Jack City? I'm pretty sure you have. You 60 years old. That shit been out for a minute. Let her know what you think about crackhead and crackhead moves because I'm starting to feel like she did a crackhead move. And I'm, you know what they say, birds of a feather flock together. Now, I'm not calling you a crackhead because you're not, but you better watch your bearings because what people see is what people put as a team, as a couple. Oh, well, he's smoking crack and she's smoking crack. You don't want nobody thinking you a crackhead and you're not. That shit is not fucking cool. I'm just saying. Hey, okay, my dears. So let's get on to the next one. Hey April, I'm a real fan of your channel. Names have been changed. Please help. You can call me Samantha. I wanted to write to you to ask your opinion. I'm 40 years old and still live with my mother, Beth. I pay half of the bills for our apartment and have invested so much into our apartment over the years. Before you shake your head, let me explain. I'm an only child. My mother raised me as a single mother. It has always been my mother's support. I have always been my mother's support system and she has always been mine. This may be where the problem started. My mother has recently retired. She is disinterested in doing anything. I work full time and going back to school to obtain my bachelor's degrees. When I come home, the apartment is always dirty, cluttered, and smells like a litter box from her cat. I try to have conversations with her about keeping the apartment clean and to better standards. She agrees, she agrees but that lasts as long as the conversation. I want to move out and I want to move to the West Coast. But I feel like if I do, my mother will have nobody. And I will find her on an episode of Hoarders or Worse Dead. I have never had a healthy relationship because my mom has always been an oppressive presence in my life. I have always followed the motto, the motto, excuse me, family first. But now I'm questioning that motto. Can I leave with my conscience clear? Have I done all I can do? Or should I continue to try to change my current situation? Your opinion is greatly appreciated. Thank you, Samantha. So Samantha is 40. She's an only child. and She still lives at home with her mom. And they are each other's support system. There is really nothing wrong with that. You know what I mean? Like my daughter and me, she's 20. I'm 42. She doesn't live at home anymore. She has her own apartment out here. Though I wish she would have stayed. Because I miss her. You know what I mean? And, um, but she has her own kids, so she has her own life to live. So I respect that. But, if you're living with somebody that's filthy, then that's a problem. I, for one, am not like a huge cat fan. I don't really like felines too much. Um, just because of past situations when I did have them. And the one thing that I don't like is going into someone's house and it smells like fucking cat. Alright? I just don't like it. I... The thing about cats I just don't like is their nails and they're just sneaky, okay? Very sneaky. Um, and I've had a situation with the cat try to drink my kids' milk while they were eating cereal, okay? So that's a reason why I don't like cats. Um, my kid, they were smaller. My oldest son was much younger. He was like seven. It's not even, probably like six or five. And he was eating a bowl of cereal at the kitchen table. And I never forget the cat. We called her Cinderella. She got up on the table and tried to drink the milk out of his bowl while he was eating it. And my son basically told her no. Did he, did she take her claws out and scratch my son's face? Like, ugh. 
That fucking cat pissed me off so bad. She took off running and I couldn't find her. When I did find her, she was under my bed and I found this out as I was standing on my by my bed just getting something. I don't remember what it was. Did this motherfucking feline just reach out and to my ankles? I had to put that cat the fuck outside. So that is why I really don't like cats too much, okay? And also that purring thing just gets to me. I just, I'm really, I'm not a cat person. And I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one, okay? I have a little dog and that's what I like. A little miniature hot dog, Dotson. And that's what I like. He doesn't purr. He don't reach out from under the bed. He don't be trying to steal nobody's milk while they're eating cereal. So I don't really like cats. But if your mother has a litter box of cats and she's not cleaning it, that is a health issue, okay? That is one health issue. But it's also not cool. It doesn't smell too good. It's not like those commercials where you can go get that Febreze spray and spray it around like they've done for the other people's animals. That really doesn't work. That is a solution temporarily. And then what happens is the motherfucking house goes back to stenching and smelling like cat shit and cat pee. I just... That's just one thing I'm not really cool with. I'm not saying that I'm the best housekeeper in the world. Like, I like my house to be clean and I love for it to smell good. But I just cannot do the cat thing. Now, you're 40 years old. You still live at home. You want to move out. You don't want to live there anymore. But you feel like if you leave your mom, you're going to find her on TLC's Hoarder Show. Because she's a, she likes to accumulate stuff, I guess. Or you're or dead. But, and you want to move to the West Coast. There's nothing wrong with moving to the West Coast. However, family comes first. Yes, that is the motto. That's the old saying. But sometimes family will cut your fucking throat and take everything that you have. So I'm not going to say family is always first. I'm going to say that to a certain extent. Like with my kids, they are my family and they always come first. And I'll do whatever I need to do to take care of them and make sure that they are right. And if they cut my throat a couple of times, it's to be expected because they kids and that's what happens. Just like with my older son. We don't really get along like that. However, my, my other son, Wuzzle, he's going to New York next week for two weeks and he's going to stay with my older son. I know he's in good hands because my oldest son don't play around with certain bullshit. However, family first, yes, that may be the model. However, sometimes you find good friends that are just as better than family. And you wish the fuck they were your family. Just like my friend Nicole. She is my best friend and I love her to death. And we've been knowing each other since I've lived out here. So I've been here almost three years in Arizona. And I've met her probably like six months into me living here and we have been the best of friends and she's my only friend that's the only friend I have next to my daughter and we speak to each other like we family and we go through a lot of things and we discuss it with one another but back to the message at hand that is your mother and we all have to be there for our parents because they were there for us they've taken care of us and they've raised us and they've groomed us however you cannot let anyone throw guilt on what you want to do in life. And I say this because with my mom, she is back on the East Coast and I'm on the West Coast. She has thrown the guilt game at me before moving over here. Oh, you're just going to leave like that? Oh, you'll be all the way on the other side of the world? Oh, how are you going to leave me like that? I didn't leave you. I went to make my family, my children's lives better. So I didn't leave you. And besides, you have my sister that lives with you. But if I would have went along with her guilt and just saying certain things, then I would be somewhere where I really did not want to be. You know what I mean? And it's sad to say the least, Like, but I'm happy that I've left the East Coast and all my family is on the East Coast, but... Please, they ain't even act like they was my motherfucking family. They never gave me a shout out like, hey girl, how you doing? Want to come through? Never never called to check up on me or anything like that. So family can fuck you too sometimes. That's what that F is in. That's what the F of family means sometimes. Fuck you, okay? But you want to leave on a clear conscience. And there's nothing wrong with that because that's your mama. But you want to make sure that you don't separate the relationship with you and your mother now she's retired and that's a good thing you want to move to the west coast let me ask you something samantha 
Have you ever asked your mom, would you like to move to the West Coast with me? Have you ever brought that across her instead of just saying, I want to move? You know, like, bring her to the West Coast. If she's down for it, why not move her to the West Coast? You guys don't have to live together permanently, but temporarily. Until you're able to get her into, like, a nice living facility for the elder. And they have many of those out here. Or get her into her own place that's close by you. So that way you can check up on her frequently. I'm not saying leave her and I'm not saying stay. But what I am saying is you need to do what's best for Samantha. Because sometimes we, we seem to hold on to things because of certain situations like family and boyfriend and girlfriend. Like what if I got a really good job in another state? You know what I mean? And my daughter Tati didn't want to move. She wanted to stay here with my grandson. I would be heartbroken because that's my grandson and that's my daughter. But I got other little kids that I got to think about too. I got to think about their future. And if this is a way for me to make ends meet, then I got to do what I got to do. And I will see you. But you don't want to leave your mom unattended to. Especially on the other side of the world. Now, she doesn't seem like she's handicapped and she's not capable of doing anything. She just doesn't want to. That's why I said, why don't you ask her, is she, would she like to move to the West Coast with you? And you guys roommate for a while until she finds somewhere to live that's affordable for her. Nobody said that it has to be set in stone that y'all live together forever. But if you're her only family and she's your only family, then by all means, you guys got to stick together. That's just a guarantee. But you have to live out your life dreams. I'm not saying move to the West Coast for a man. But if you're not ready to move to the West Coast, the first step before even moving to the West Coast would be to move out to your own apartment where y'all are currently living at. You know what I'm saying? Don't take the big leap of faith and move all the way to the West Coast when you know that you and her are all y'all got. We all we got. CMB or whatever that shit was from New Jack City. Um, y'all all y'all got. So the first thing I would do, because she's not adhering to, you know, your complaints and your conversations with her about the cleansiness of the fucking cats and disorderliness of the house and being cluttered. If she is not adhering to that first, the first fucking thing that I would do is I would find myself an apartment in the same town that we currently live in. That way, you can get her prepared for if she has to live on her own and you move to another state, then she's able to do that. Nobody likes to live with somebody that's dirty and messy and just don't have no motivation. You know what I'm saying? She's lived her time out working and now she's just interested in things. Maybe she's just tired and she wants a break. But the first thing I would do is I would honestly freaking move out of the apartment that we have now and move into my own space. So that way you're still able to go over there and check on your mother. That would sit a whole lot better with your conscience than moving all the way to the West Coast first. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I did it, but I knew that my mother was taken care of because my sister's there. All my cousins are in New York. Her sisters are there. So, you know what I'm saying? My mother's relatives are all there, and they always speak to each other. So I knew my mom was okay, but you and your mom have nobody but each other. So the first step that I would take is moving out on my own into a apartment that is nearby my mom. Let her figure herself out. That way she's able to take care of herself and you can keep an eye on her. But you don't have to go home to a mess. Yeah, you're probably going to go over to her house and it's going to be a mess. But at least you can leave and go to your own place of dwelling knowing that it's safe and clean and cat free. So that would be my number one suggestion. Moving to the West Coast is not a piece of cake. It is not easy. It takes a lot of adjustment to do. And trust me when I tell you, the first, like, I want to say the first year I was here, I, was, I wasn't depressed, but I wasn't, like, so happy either. And it's because I missed my other grandson, who's three years old now, and I missed my eldest son. And I just felt so, like, out of place because of the ethnicity out here. I felt overwhelmed. I felt hot because of the heat. I felt just 
a lot of things at one time. So it was a big step for me. And now being here for almost three years, it's so much easier and I've adapted to life here. You couldn't drag me out of here. But it's a big adjustment. And why move to the West Coast when you have your mama on the East Coast? And that's one thing that's already fucking with you mentally. And then to come somewhere else and then have a whole bunch of other things fuck with you mentally, it will fuck your whole shit up so bad, girl, that you will not know whether you need to whine your butt or scratch your watch, okay? Yes, whine your butt or scratch your watch. And if you girls don't know where that saying came from, it was from the original Steel Magnolias movie with Dolly Parton and Julia Roberts and stuff. I love that freaking movie. I think I've seen it like 50 times. But... Me personally, I would just move out onto my own and, and make it from there. Because, for one, you have lived with your mother all your life. Now you're going to take that big leap of faith and move all the way to the West Coast. You've been with her all your life living with her. So, that's kind of hard to move from her all the way out there. Me, I, I left my mom when I was like 18. Okay, I had a baby. So, I have never went back to living with her. So, I've lived on my own. But you, you're 40. You have not lived on your own. You live with your mother. So the first thing you need to do is to kind of cut the little umbilical cord a little bit and move into your own apartment nearby and adjust to that because you both are going to need to adjust to that. And once you found yourself adjusted to that, I'm not saying a few weeks, a few months. It may take some time, like a couple of years. Then wean yourself into moving out of state. But don't just take that huge leap of faith if you're still living at home and you've always lived at home with your mama. Now you want to move out, but you want to move out all the way cross country. Girl, please, you will have a breakdown and a shakedown, okay? So my first advice to you would be to move into your own apartment nearby your mother so that way you're able to check on her she's able to make sure that you're okay and you're able to feel comfortable with your decision of moving out don't just jump out there into the fire into the flames that shit won't work for everybody what work for me may not work for everybody you know what i'm saying it just don't i'm just saying i'm just fucking saying so, yes, you girls, let Samantha know your thoughts about moving out, moving across country, and what would you do? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Okay, so this is going to be the last one. This is the fourth one. And I'm surprised my memory card did not run out of memory yet. So let me not jinx it because I'm pretty sure by the time I get through this, I'm going to have to pop in my other memory card. I'm not sure if it's because I formatted the card or what, but let's just go with the flow. Hi, April. Love your, love your channel. I was in search on finding good... Hi, April. I love your channel. I was in search on finding good weight tutorials when I was diagnosed with thyroid disease two years ago. Anyway, warning, this is a little long. You can call me Shantae. I live in a small town in Oklahoma, born and raised here all my life, and I graduated high school in 2015. I have been working a part-time job for, um, I've been working a part-time job since I was 17 years old as a caregiver. I am now looking for a job because my 93-year-old patient has dementia and is moving into a nursing home. Back in 2008 to 2009, me and my brother and my mom were evicted out of our home because of our house catching on fire and my brother selling dope who is 10 years older than me, who is also inconsiderate. While me and my mom had nowhere to go and no family to help, still to this day, if we were to ask family members to help us, they would turn their nose up at us and they'd say they can't help. We were forced to live in a motel while my brother moved in with his girlfriend. If times weren't already bad, things got worse. My mom ended up losing her job and had to file for unemployment until she found the job she currently works for that still ain't shit and was able to save enough money to get us an apartment that we currently live in. Now fast forward to today. We still struggle. We don't depend on the government for housing or food. We do good for a few months and then we hit a rough patch in the road where she can barely pay for rent. She doesn't make enough money. Mind you, we live in a small town in Oklahoma where there are little to no jobs. We want to move but have been putting it off because we don't make enough money and we agree that I stay and finish high school. Now that I'm graduated, I just need some advice and encouragement to get out of this no good shithole we live in and move on. I'm so stressed and tired of crying myself to sleep every night. 
So I don't recall her changing her name. Oh, she did. She said Shantae. Okay. So Shantae is young. She still is living at home with her mom because she's young. She just graduated high school. Good for her. But she got a brother who sells dope that's 10 years older. Her mom is just barely making ends meet because she's just barely making ends meet. She lives in a small town in Oklahoma where there's really nothing much at. Now, I'm not really sure about Oklahoma. I've heard things about Oklahoma that ain't it ain't really popping out there. So if you guys or anybody that's watching this live in Oklahoma, please write below what Oklahoma is all about because I'm not really sure. I don't know. Okay. However, I can relate to her when she says she lives in a small town. There ain't shit and there's no jobs. I can relate to her because of where I came from. Now, you know, I'm born and raised in Queens, New York City. However, I did move upstate New York um, as I was older. I think I was like 21, 22 when I moved upstate New York. So I was living upstate New York for like 18 years or something like that. But this little small town called Schenectady, New York is a hellhole. There ain't shit there. There ain't no jobs there. There's no future. Nothing. Nothing is promised there. So that is the reason why I left and came here to Arizona. Now, your mother doesn't ask for assistance from the government and you don't either. Some people, I'm going to tell you what, some people use the system to just get over. And then there are some who use the system to get help and get on their feet. Now, I have said this in many videos before, that yes, I was a single mother, lived out of state, well, it was New York is still state, but I lived upstate, and I was struggling. And so what did I do? I had to get on food stamps. I had to get on Medicaid for me and my son to eat. I worked at the drive through at Burger King, and it did not make ends meet. It did not pay my rent electricity and all of that like it would pay some things but it was still a struggle so i used these certain steps meaning aid from the government to feed me and my child to get on my feet and to better myself and a lot of programs come out of these type of places whether you know it or not you just need to look into it you can get your high school diploma you can go back to school you can get help finding a better job with all of these places like with the department of social services they can help you. So sometimes a lot of people that are hard workers are sometimes so proud. And you have to put your pride aside sometimes to be able to make sure that your family is able to survive. And I know that it's hard for a lot of people to just say, I don't want these people in my business. I don't want to know who I am. I'll just make it on my own. Sometimes we cannot make it on our own. And sometimes we need a little help. Especially if you have family, like she stated, that turn their nose up and say we can't help. Now didn't I just say something about family? Like, family, the F and family sometimes be meaning fuck you. I did just say that, right? And, at, and unfortunately, that is the truth. Sometimes the F in family means fuck you. Okay? And... Just because you're blood related doesn't mean that these people are going to fucking help you. So what do you have to do? These people on their high horses, you got to get on your high horse too sometimes. And it's unfortunate because those are family and we want to be able to depend on family. But some people just don't take the word family as the meaning fucking family. Okay? Now, I ain't going to say I'm one of them to take the, as, the word family as family because it all depends on who you are in my family. If you are no good, um, no good, good doer or you, you ain't worth shit, you ain't about shit, you start trouble, you a thief or whatever, and, but you're still related to me, do you think I'm going to let you stay in my house? Hell fucking no. Just because we got the same blood type or we related does not mean that I got to let you in my house because we related. You is not worth shit. Now, if you my friend... And you're worth something. You're worth a whole lot of shit. You're a good person. You're the total opposite of my family member. And you need somewhere to go. Am I let you in my house and stay for a while? Of course. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes friend and family, both F's. Okay? They both can mean fuck you. And then they both can mean one word. Family. Friends can mean family. I know a lot of people that be like, oh, that's my family right there. Because they are a really good friend. Oh, but that's your cousin over there. I'll fuck that nigga, please. Mm, I ain't real shit. And I have, I have my family members like that. I already told y'all that in the video. My cousin, please. Her no good ass. Trifling ass. Oh, dirty. But whatever. You think I give a fuck about how she feel? Because she one that always one. Oh, girl, how you doing? I ain't spoke to you in two years. Oh, you need a wig? Bitch, please. Okay. Now... You want to get out of the town, and you want 
to move. And your mama wants to move. But you guys just cannot afford it. Because times are hard. Okay? I get that. I totally get that. But I'm going to tell y'all what. Sometimes you got to put certain things aside to get ahead. Meaning your pride. Your mother doesn't want to go get aid from the government because she just doesn't want to. You're old enough. You can do this on your own. Also, when it comes income tax season, and you get your taxes back, a lot of people like to splurge their tax money on dumb shit. You know what I did when I got my taxes back? Um, back in 2013, I, like I told y'all before, I put it in a bank account and froze the bank account. Because that money I used as part of my moving money. You know what I mean? If I, didn't, if I would not have done that and not froze my accounts, I would not have been here. Because I know I like to buy shit. I like to go out shopping. But I was determined to move somewhere. Okay? To get away from the hellhole of Schenectady. So sometimes you got to take other alternatives and other options to get ahead. Now you want to move out because of the small town. And it's you and your mother. First things first, you got to put your pride aside. And even your mother's, she got to put her pride aside. Because there are many different agencies that will assist her in paying her rent, assist her with food and bills. So what? She works. They'll still help her. And like I said, pride can be an issue in a lot of relationships. And it doesn't have to be a relationship with a man person. It could be a relationship with a mother and a daughter. It's a pride thing. And a lot of people let pride take over and they don't allow things to better themselves because their pride is in the way. You know what I mean? If you hungry on the street and you don't have a dime to your name, that person would say, I'd rather starve than ask somebody. That's the pride. So, bitch, you could have been fed and not died tomorrow because your pride? Come on, man. I'm a type of person, I don't like being told no. However, I'm pretty sure there are a whole lot of other people out there that don't like to be told no. And a lot of it has to do with my pride. Like, if you tell me no, I feel like you shot me the fuck down. But sometimes I got to put my pride aside as well and say, hey, can you help me with this? Or can you do this for me? And if you say no, then you know what? It is what it is. Nigga, then I didn't need your ass anyway to help me, okay? That just allows me and lets me see that you really ain't for me. But sometimes we have to put our pride aside so that we can get ahead. So that we can be able to make ends meet. And especially in these little towns where there's really not much work, you need to get help. And you need to talk to your mom and let her know, listen, I understand how you feel, but sometimes we don't make ends meet and I hate to see you struggling. If she's paying the rent and you're living with her and you have a part-time job, I would hope that you're helping her pay some of these bills as well. And I'm pretty sure you are because you seem like a well-rounded person. However, you need to speak with your mom and let her know sometimes we have to put our pride aside Pride aside and ask for help so that we are okay. Nobody wants to be sitting in an apartment that we're about to get evicted from because you couldn't pay all the rent. Or we're hungry today because you couldn't get any food because you had to pay the rent. Or we don't have any lights because you had to pay the rent. Nobody should have to live like that. And there are plenty of agencies that can help you. And the one important key, you got to believe and you got to put your pride aside sometimes. That way, then you can make the next step. The first step is putting your pride aside. A lot of people get ashamed. And a lot of people be ashamed to ask for help or what have you. And I get that. I'm one of those people. But you never know. That person that you ask for help, they may really be helpful. So on that note, let her know what you think. And as always, stay diva and divalicious. And I will see you girls on my next video because my memory card is blinking so I think it's about to run out.